I hate stop loss hunting, and I hate the obvious price manipulation on lower time frames. If you want to survive in the trading game, you need to protect yourself from these practices. Here's what you should do. While all markets are prone to manipulation to some extent, some markets are known for being more susceptible to these practices than others. At first glance, penny stocks may seem appealing because they tend to fluctuate tremendously in price in very short periods of time. In theory, you could generate a very high return quickly, but they come with a significant risk. The penny stock market is particularly vulnerable to manipulation due to the low liquidity and the lack of regulation compared to major stock exchanges. As a result, trading penny stocks can be very risky, especially for inexperienced traders who may not be able to spot the signs of price manipulation. I personally also avoid certain cryptocurrencies. These markets are often targeted by pump and dump schemes where large players artificially inflate their price through deceptive marketing and then quickly sell off their positions, leaving smaller traders, like us, with losses. The daily average volume should be the primary factor in your market selection process. You should focus on high volume markets and avoid thinly traded ones that are prone to manipulation by smart money. In my case, when I'm trading stocks, the average daily volume over the past 50 days must be at least 1 million shares traded. Any stock that is trading under 1 million shares per day can be easily manipulated by market makers, and they usually trade very slowly. Think about it this way. Do you really want to be trading a stock that smart money wants nothing to do with? Low volume means low interest in the market and the low volume market is not worth trading as it tends to be extremely speculative and unpredictable. Because there is such a limited number of volume, a large order can cause a huge spike in the price. Or if the smart money decides to sell, the price will tank with ease. Neither scenario is ideal for us small players. Unusual trading activity, such as abnormal volume or price movements, can be a sign of smart money manipulation. When smart money enter a market, they tend to do so with a significant capital, which can move the price and volume in ways that differ from normal market activity. This can be seen through increased trading volume and sudden price movements that are not explained by any fundamental news or events. For instance, if a stock is experiencing a significant increase in volume, but there is no corresponding news or event that could have caused it, it could be a sign of smart money manipulation. You see these movements quite often if you trade certain crypto markets. If trading volume is consistent with price movements, it means that the market is functioning as expected with buyers and sellers operating within a normal range. However, sudden spikes in trading volume that are not consistent with price movements can be a red flag. This could indicate that smart money is entering the market, buying or selling large orders, and artificially inflating or deflating its price. Smart money can manipulate prices on lower timeframes by buying or selling in large volumes, causing price spikes that can be short-lived. However, these manipulations tend to be less effective on higher timeframes as they require more sustained buying or selling pressure to influence price significantly. Higher timeframes provide a more extended view of price action compared to shorter ones. As a result, Higher timeframes tend to have more significant supply or demand areas or support and resistance levels that are not easily manipulated by smart money. By moving on higher timeframes, you can avoid getting caught up in the volatility of price spikes caused by smart money manipulation. Here we have two trading charts, side by side. On the left, the daily timeframe, 
on the right, the 15-minute one. Observe on the lower chart the obvious liquidity clearout, but you can't see it on the higher time frame. Trading on higher time frames, such as the 4-hour or the daily chart, can protect you from stop-loss hunting. One of the main advantages is the ability to filter out noise and false signals that can occur on lower time frames. In this scenario, stop loss hunting is only visible on the 15 minute chart, while it's not visible on the daily time frame. And this is because higher time frames tend to have more stable and consistent price action, making it harder for smart money to manipulate prices. Avoid trading during news releases or major events that can cause volatile price movements and increase the risk of stop-loss hunting. Trading during news releases is dangerous as the market can experience sudden and significant price movements, which can be difficult to predict as a retail trader. This increased volatility is a perfect opportunity for stop-loss hunting as market makers can take advantage of the chaotic market conditions to push price in their favor. By stepping back and waiting for the market to stabilize, you can avoid the knee-jerk reactions that often follow news releases. By being patient and waiting for the market to settle down, you can avoid making hasty decisions and reduce the risk of being caught up in a stop-loss hunting scheme. You must use a combination of technical and fundamental analysis to gain a better understanding of market conditions and identify potential manipulation. I am afraid technical analysis isn't enough. Fundamental analysis involves looking at the underlying factors that influence the market, such as economic indicators, company financials, or major news events. Analyze these factors so you can gain a deeper understanding of the market's overall health and potential areas of opportunity or risk. By combining technical and fundamental analysis, you can get a more comprehensive view of market conditions and identify potential areas of manipulation. For example, a sudden increase in trading volume followed by a sharp price movement may indicate that smart money is manipulating the market. However, by also considering fundamental factors, such as news events or changes in company financials, you can better determine whether the price movement is justified or the result of manipulation. I said before, start thinking like a hunter, not a prey. Imagine you are the biggest player in the market. Consider where the liquidity is and what might determine retail traders to take certain positions. Remember what happened the last time your stops were hunted. You were fooled to take a position, thinking price is going to move in a certain direction, or maybe you were triggered by the speed of a price movement. Then once the trap has been set, you entered, and price moved against you. You need to understand the different trading strategies used by smart money such as stop-loss hunting and false breakouts, to avoid being caught up in their traps. Smart money can manipulate the market by making sharp and aggressive moves at the boundaries of a trading range, inducing traders to take the wrong direction. A simple way to identify a potential stop hunt is when the market appears to be quiet and in consolidation, and is followed by a sharp move out of the range, faking a breakout. The main objectives of such price move are obvious, to take out existing stops, and determine traders to commit to positions in the opposite direction of the real trend. When there are enough positions, the price is moved in the direction of the real trend, triggering their stops. Retail traders are instructed to trade chart patterns. Flags, triangles, wedges, double tops, double bottoms. And these are exactly the patterns targeted by smart money to fool you. During some patterns, 
they even trap traders in both directions. Take a look at this triangle. On the lower boundary, notice that each time it comes down to the line, the lows become slightly higher. This makes it hard for sellers to turn a profit. On the upper boundary, the same thing happens with each high becoming progressively lower, trapping buyers. The same is true for a wedge or a flag formation. These consolidation patterns are perfect for random spikes. Expect at least a fake breakout if you decide to trade these formations. Smart money also trap retail traders during accumulation and distribution phases. During an accumulation phase, smart money tends to take advantage of the market's sideways movement to accumulate positions, while encouraging retail traders to take the opposite positions. The accumulation phase often begins with the resetting of a swing high or low, followed by a period of low activity where the market cycles back and forth between two price points. Smart money gradually accumulates as more and more traders begin to take the bait. And when their orders are triggered, price is quickly pulled away and they will often be stopped out on the other side of the range, which is also widening. A distribution phase begins with a new swing high and then the market starts to move sideways creating a range between two areas. During this phase, smart money gradually sell their positions while inducing retail traders to buy. And when price reaches a certain level, smart money starts to aggressively sell off their positions, causing the price to drop quickly. I hope you see the difference between retail and smart money. You, as retail trader, buy at support. Smart money buy below support. And when price moves higher, professionals will cover their long trades and start taking their profit. At that time, you are just starting to enter a long position. When you enter from these areas that are extreme highs or lows, the big guys are taking their profit and leaving the market. To avoid getting trapped in a losing position, you might be inclined to avoid using stop losses. In the case of market manipulation, not using a stop loss can be a very bad strategy because it leaves you vulnerable to sudden and significant price movements that could result in substantial losses. A manipulation can cause prices to move suddenly and unpredictably, which can catch you off guard. You need to use a stop loss and you want to exit a trade before it becomes too costly. If you don't have a stop loss in place, you may continue to hold your position, hoping that price will eventually move back in your favor. However, once you are trapped, the price could move even further against you. It's common sense to have a risk management plan, a set of rules and guidelines that you must follow to manage your risk exposure. This includes determining the amount of capital to risk on each trade, setting stop loss levels, and having a plan for exiting your trades. There's a big difference between us and them. Smart money use advanced algorithms and quantitative models to analyze market data and make trades. They use high frequency trading techniques to execute trades quickly and at a high volume. They use advanced risk management techniques to minimize their exposure to potential losses. They use market intelligence and research to stay informed about global economic developments. They execute trades across multiple exchanges to access liquidity and achieve the best execution. At the end of the day, we, retail traders, are in a big disadvantage. For us, is market manipulation and stop-loss hunting. For them, it's just usual business. Now, as I said before, you buy at support, while smart money buy below support. In this video, you'll learn exactly how these traps work. And check out our academy program if you want to further level up your trading. Until next time.